From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. With Gina Grad on news, Bald Brian on sound effects, and a spirited round of the Rotten Tomatoes game. And now, the least racist person in the room. Also, the only person in the room. Adam Corolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice, big guy. Now, man, did you get it on, man? Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grad? That's right. Handball, Brian. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Well, now let's see. Uh, So much to uh, so much to get into. Um, A subject that we visited briefly some some months ago, but um, I got into it a little more in depth over the weekend with somebody, and. I'm interested in fleshing it out, which is nice versus considerate. Mm. And uh, Mm. the longer I spend on this planet, the more I realize I really love considerate people. And we we put a pretty high premium on nice, but if you take nice without considerate Mm -hmm. that's that's a zero burger it really is a sociopath that's just a person who shows up a half hour late every time you meet them for lunch and they're super nice about it yeah but but nice and i'm also starting to wonder if nice i'm so i'm trying to figure out what nice is now there there are people who are naturally nice and then there's nice that is used like ellen Yeah, like Ellen. Yeah, Phil Rosenthal is naturally nice, but Ellen uses nice. Right. There are people who use nice. There's like, you know, female middle-aged realtors on yeah. the West Side that use nice, sure. you know. And Car I'm, salesman. Yeah, and I'm starting to wonder if sometimes the people who cultivate nice, are they nice or are they cultivating nice to sort of take the place of some other attributes, let's say. And so for me, and I started to start to break down like considerate. I love considerate. Like anyone who's ever had a considerate roommate has had a good, has had a good relationship with that person. And if you have an inconsiderate roommate, you're fucked. And if you have an inconsiderate roommate who's not nice, it's miserable. But if you have a nice, inconsiderate roommate, you're still kind of fucked. Yeah, it's it's still gonna be yeah. uh, it's it's still gonna be a sink full of dishes when you come home from vacation. Yeah, right. Good guy, to ha- good guy to hang with, have a beer with. But yeah, there's gonna be the dishes in the sink. You don't want to come home to him, right? And then I started thinking, well, what are the different kinds of considerate? Because I'm not considerate. I'm not socially considerate. I'm not good with birthdays and anniversaries and, you know, when somebody's family member falls ill, I don't have the right words. So I'm not like. I have, I have a yes. good example of that. Please. Um, I don't know why this popped into my head, but I think we were in we were in Vancouver. We all went to Vancouver together. Right. Mm-hmm. That was one of our stops. And I'll never forget. I was we were about to go on stage and you and August were all sitting in the back. And you said to me, Adam said, um, oh, August said like you, he could tell you're losing a lot of weight and I said oh thank you thank you so much and you're like well I didn't say it August said it <laughs> <laughs> credit words do passed it on so <laughs> August is a August is a good example of a guy who's very considerate but not socially considerate mm. he's the guy who will drop you off at the airport and not make the flight to return the car to the rental place. Now, by the way, in those instances, I don't give a fuck about nice. I want that. I want whatever Mike is. But also, Mike's not the guy to go to when your girlfriend breaks up with you or what have you. Yes, Ryan? That's interesting because the first thing I associate with uh, uh, being uh, considerate is like being conscientious, being aware, being alert, like knowing, like you mentioned, the birthday, but also like, oh, that guy's uh, tire looks a little low. I should tell him. Or, you know, just being aware of your surroundings and like, oh, that person might want to know that or they could help that person. And August is one of the least aware and alert people we know. But I would agree with you. He's 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 considerate. Well, he's he's considerate in a kind of brass taxi, like get it done sort of way. So 
I think a good example of practically considerate, but not socially considerate, is I don't know people's birthdays and anniversaries and things of that nature. But if I'm walking down the street and I see a drywall screw, I always pick it up. I, mm. I never want anyone to get a flat tire from that wherever. Could be 100 yards from where I'm sitting, just in the middle of the street. I will stop and pick it up. You guys' birthdays both in May? Mm-hmm. Yeah. May, May 5th and May 27th? There you Close. go. May 1st. Oh. Oh. Oh, May Day, yeah. That's not, not sick of a mile. May You're thinking of another holiday. Yeah, I was. I really was. You're September 22nd? 13th. Oh, un- wait, it, when's Tessa? It's unknowable. 20th. Unknowable. No. <laughs> it, 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 it possibly know <laughs> it's unknowable. So I am now a guy, like a good example of a guy who's considerate and socially considerate and nice, although yeah, you can get on his wrong side, is Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel's mm. good with the anniversaries and the birthdays, mm. and he's sort of considerate in a, a bigger, more practical way. Guys like Mike and me are more sort of sort of practically considerate. So if you want to be my roommate, it'll probably be good. If you're a very sensitive female and you want your, your birthday recognized, it, it won't be good, but it'll be good day in and day out. Like it'll be good kind of kind of nuts mm-hmm. and bolts. But then I start thinking about nice people, and I'm now trying to I'm not I, I'm trying to parse out the people that are nice, like super nice, but can you be nice and not be considerate? See, my thing is, is if you are super nice, but you're not fucking considerate, then you're not nice. Right. You're, you, you got a lot of smiles and you're right. friendly and everything, but you, you're kind of fucking people around a lot. Well, that's why I said if you're if you're 100 percent nice and zero percent considerate, you're a sociopath. You're you're a user. Yeah, they're a Venn diagram. They overlap, of course, but there's not you know perfect, you know, 100 percent commonality. Yeah, I know people who are genuinely, well, it's kind of interesting. My mom is a nice person who's not considerate or she, mm. she, everyone thinks they're considerate. That's, that's number one, but who, who will not, I get, I guess let's try to define considerate doing things you don't have to do because it's the right thing to do that don't benefit you. That don't benefit you, but it's the right thing to do. There's a room. There's a random version. The random version is finding the drywall screw in the street and just bending down and picking it up and walking it to the trash can. Or as I said, uh, Paulette Gergos, who I saw many year, years ago, just randomly walking down the street, just bending down, picking up a piece of garbage and walking it a quarter mile until she found her her next trash can. That's a kind of a that, that's that's with nobody watching. Then there's the roommate version, which is, eh, your roommate's coming home from vacation. You got, you made lasagna. You got a sink full of pots and pans. It's it's not fair for that person to return to your apartment with a sink full of pots and pans. There's that version of it. But I do know a lot of people who are nice. And here's what I'm, here's my, here's something that I've gleaned and, and I'm, uh, 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 something I'm trying to cobble together. I know people, my mom is one of these people. She's a nice person, but the nice is kind of a compensation for burning calories. Like right, if, for if action. Other Well, because if you're just a nice person, you don't have to spend money on people and you don't have to do, you don't have to do a lot of stuff. You can right. just be nice. And part of the nice comes with the sort of general proclamations, like somebody's got to help these kids in the inner city or these indigenous people, they, they suffer so, you know, the indigenous population, but they never really actually do anything. They just sort of make the, the proclamations. And maybe the proclamation people and the nice people are sort of on the same side of the street. 
it's funny. I had the, I had the th- that same thought, but more socially than than your example. My example, I thought of in the just popped into my head was like if you're going to a dinner, right? A dinner, you know, eight or ten people at someone's house. Uh, the courteous person brings the bottle of wine. Like, oh no, we're having this. I thought this would go really well. I found this at a small winery. I think I would like it. The nice person doesn't bring anything, but they're like, oh, you were, you work so hard. The place looks great. The dinner's amazing. You know, what I mean, right. you, you you can give lip service, but uh, the courteous person shows up with something and something thoughtful so let's see brian gina and me where are we versus the nice versus Mm. considerate but again subcategory socially considerate because i am not literally where are we where do we evaluate ourselves yeah i'm i am not socially considerate that that i do not score well in but i do score well in the considerate department to sort of yeah, I don't know, walk around, flip off lights, uh, put lids back on stuff, mm-hmm. like sort of, I guess, I guess when somebody, you know, I guess when you ask somebody to do something or they tell you to do something, is it, does it weigh heavy on your mind? Is it, is something, do you forget about, is it in one year and out the other? No. Do you write it down? Do you feel obliged? You know, like if somebody asks me to do something like bring something in or do something or tell this person something, it weighs on me until I do it. Like I think about it way more, way more than I, than I should, but, but, but socially no good. I, 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 I think I'm a very fair evaluator of myself, both pro and con. I certainly have a lot of bad, uh, uh, personality traits that I'm working on. I do I really honestly, before this this conversation even came up, I consider being considerate, no pun intended, one of my strengths. I really think I'm very considerate. I pride myself on it. Like, an example that pops to mind a couple of weeks ago, Adam, you know who Dan Bongino is? Am I pronouncing that name right? He's a conservative. Yeah, he's a conservative. He was an I know, ex-CIA. Uh, yeah, sorry, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it. Dan oh, Bongino was an ex-Secret Service guy who's gone into talk radio. Right. And I, I followed him on Twitter. We don't agree on a lot, but, you know, he was an interesting follow. And he announced that he was diagnosed with cancer, pretty advanced cancer, actually, a couple of weeks ago. And I just sent him a message. Hey, man, I've been there. If you ever want to reach out and just talk, you know, by all means. No, I didn't, I didn't do like a big thing about it, like a big retweet. You know what I mean? I just kind of replied to his thing. And it just seemed like the right thing to do. I've been in that position and I would hope someone would have been in that position for me had they been, you know, in the same hierarchy or whatever. So I just kind of reached out so i feel like that's a considerate i do a lot of that stuff yeah that's that's definitely a a trait of being uh considerate um one of the main one of the main determiners for consideration is sushi (laughs) no when when you go out when when there's four people at that table and the sushi shows up and uh they got the uh god i'm trying to think of the uh the fatty the fatty tuna that's on top. The albacore? No, not the albacore. God, the toro. 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 Right. When there's that toro and there's that last piece of toro there, <laughs> oh. and it's about 11 bucks worth of toro, and everyone's just kind of looking at it, and you fucking can taste that thing in your mouth, and everyone's kind of lost count on who's gotten what. Mm-hmm. Do you reach for it? Do you, do you, do you hand it off? That that sushi, you could tell like they like, you know, when they do those tests, it's interesting. They do those tests, do the clock, uh, Max Pata. They do those tests with kids. They do like that M&M test. Like, yep. well, would you like all the oh, M&Ms yeah. today or less tomorrow? Or would you the share? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Less today or more tomorrow? Or what if you share your M&Ms? You know, the M&M. they should just do the sushi Toro Tests like put four adults around, go to Nobu, sit around a table, have one piece of Toro sitting there. Everyone wants it. No one's ever full from sushi. Everyone can handle one more one piece more of Toro. Toro, and everyone wants it. And who's going for it? That that may be the ultimate test of consideration. That's amazing. You mentioned that example. You tell me if this counts. I'm personal friends with this girl who's a uh, a sushi chef. She went to Japan to train. Now she's over here. Blah blah blah. And uh, she does like private home things. Like a year and a half ago, and we hired her. And she's like, oh, we can do the party for the dinner for eight. And I just like you know 
eat or texted my friends who I knew loved sushi. It was like, come on over, we're having sushi tonight. We paid for the whole thing. It just was a fun thing to get people together for something I know they loved. Mm -hmm. All right, we yeah. get it. You're a hero. So, Gina? Yeah. You, asked for, you asked us to evaluate. Well, it's funny. When it comes to food, the most considerate <sighs> human being on the planet, thank God, is my fiance. You, he has poker face. If he wants the last bite, if he's starving, You'll have no idea. I have no idea. He offers it. He wants me to have it. He wants the other person to have it. He's just a very kind soul. I would consider myself a very, with a caveat, a very nice person and a very considerate person. But I'm also, I don't know if my intentions are pure because a lot of times, I, like if I see someone's like, if we're, if there's a big group of people or a party and someone's alone in a corner, I can't focus on anything else. I will go introduce myself. We'll go chit chat because I'm so uncomfortable because I can't relax if I see somebody else who's maybe not having a good time. And it, maybe it's a little people pleasy, but like Ooh. I just end up being more comfortable when the people around me look comfortable. I thought of something. You know, it's a good indicator of, of considerateness, if that's a consideration. Better than uh, it, Toro Sushi? Much better. Is um, it, It's true for Kimmel, and it's true for Gina Grad. Oh. If you're a good gift giver, you know what I mean? Oh. Like, if you give a gift that, like, is not just off the rack, whatever, like, you thought about, like, I think you'd really like this, and it's some cool thing or interesting offbeat gift, That that's a good sign. That's very nice. I do yeah, like Jimmy that. always, like, scours the internet to get something find something for me or his friends that's unique and different. It's mm -hmm. never a gift card. It's never anything. It's like uh -uh. a, he got me a painting that said like fucking ace and it was just that's an good. ace. And, and it was like some artist with a certificate. Like that's just who that guy is. Well, anyway, I would say stop. Beware those who are too nice. Beware those are too nice. There's something going on. And when you find those who are nice, but kind of selfish and not really considerate, then consider that nice is probably there as a smokescreen to their lack of consideration. And beware of those who make these sort of global pro proclamation about the kids or about the indigenous people or about the whomever and don't don't ever get off their ass. Mm. Yep. Those are the people we gotta be Amen. we gotta watch out for. All right. I have yes. a quick question since we're talking about considerate and nice. Um I just sent Chris and Kaylin a picture. What do you think of the dad who shows up to the playground with the kids in the valley that wears a t-shirt that says false prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, with a Jewish star instead of an A, and what possibly looks like Benjamin Netanyahu in the middle? Wow. He was at the playground with us yesterday. <laughs> We're looking at him. Yeah, that wow. looks like Netanyahu. Yeah. And uh, that's weird. I, that was weird, right? A proc I don't know. Look, you want to wear a T-shirt that says Fly United with two ducks fucking. I'm all about that. Or the name of some fictitious gambling hall that says uh, yeah, liquor in the front, <laughs> poker in the Party rear. Yeah, poker in the rear. <laughs> liquor in the front, poker in the rear. No problemo. I like that guy. I like the making bacon shirt with the mm -hmm. with the kids kids fucking on it. Sure. Yeah, this one's a little aggressive. I agree. And I'm going to I'm going to shoot myself, I think, a hot compliment because I saw this and I ended up, you know, befriending his child because that's another thing I do at parks. I can't I, like when the parents are clearly just neglecting the kid at the park. Andy and I always run up and, you know, see if he wants to play with our kids and whatever. So playing with that kid and, you know, whatever. I sent this picture to uh, my little circle of friends going, how offended should I be by this on a scale of one to a thousand with a little like, you know, jokey face. And everyone was like, oh, up in arms. Oh, Gina. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I really don't give a shit. I just thought this was like, there's nothing about this shirt, even though it was aggressive and it made everyone uncomfortable, that that hurt me in my personal heart. It was just an odd thing to see out at the playground. Agreed. All right. Um, Max Pata, I think we've, uh, we have the, uh, Couple things we 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 have the Gavin Newsom list of do's and don'ts for Thanksgiving. It's, it's mostly don'ts. We talked about it a little bit. I don't know. There's always there's always one that really jumps out at me, and and the one that really jumped out at me was if you have to use the bathroom one. Oh yeah. But um, Max Pata also an interesting thought uh, watching football today. 
in terms of the uh, sort of progressive advertising movement, I saw, I think, to my knowledge, the first commercial, Max Bata, for K Jewelers. The first time it was the engagement ring store. The yeah. guy was presenting the ring to the to his uh to his his fiance. The guy. He was about the size of the guy with the Netanyahu uh, T-shirt, Netanyahu T-shirt. Like, yeah. The guy's about 145 pounds. Spindly. Plus size. Plus size gal. When is the Ooh. last time, have you ever seen an engagement ring commercial where the where the guy was going to, the, the chick was hefty. Uh, no problem. They should be allowed to get married too, I guess. But my point is, is very benevolent. <laughs> never seen it in a commercial for an engagement ring store where the guy was in was asking for the plus size gal's hand in marriage or possibly ham. I don't know. No, the only time you ever see that depicted, like not in real life, is for comedic purposes. Right. Right. You know, so the cartoon, you know, we're, we're sea change right. people. We're in a yeah. new we're in a new world. I don't by the way, it's not I don't have a beef with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem. I, I I have no real commentary other than it used to always be spindly models. So because the commercial was this is your ideal bride. Like this is this is your fantasy bride. This is your fancy. I mean, they would hire the best looking guy and the best looking girl. Now they they stepped it up. She's uh she's she's coming in about uh, buck eighty. Very attractive in the face, you know, a shame. But anyway, I'd like to see this. Gives a hell of a BJ. So I hear, oh I mean, that's what I read. I read that into the spot. I, I don't know if that she does. Or I not. saw the casting notice. That's right. Did they change this? The, did they change the tagline to every kiss begins with cake? That's good. <laughs> I'll see now, myself out. Now, to be fair, she's not morbidly obese. She's just a plus size model. Like it's well, good for her. Good for her. You go, girl. She's four foot six. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just, uh, you have never seen it before. Never yeah, seen it's it. It's where well, we are. Yep, yeah, it's where we are. All right, so we have the Gavin Newsom do's and don'ts, or may, mainly don'ts for Thanksgiving, yes? Something very specific yes. jumped out at me, and I can't believe it didn't jump out at you. I can't wait well, it, for Don to read it. It may have, but let's see. Okay. All right, here are the Thanksgiving rules explained as severe restrictions are put in place. First of all, no more than three households. All gatherings must include no more than three separate households, including hosts and guests, and must be held outdoors, lasting for two hours or less. I'm going to chalk your car tires. <laughs> Masks must stay on after eating and drinking. You may remove your face covering briefly to eat or drink, as long as you are at least six feet away from everyone outside their own household. So you're going to have to be, if you have more than one household, you have to have separate tables six feet away outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's and, the thing that jumped out for me the most was outside. This is for all of California. Who the fuck are the, what are the people in Tahoe going to do? What are the people in Truckee going to do? Yeah, the there about, if you're on uh, the certain side of San Francisco, it's going to be freezing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and by the way, I live I live in the foothills of Southern California. Like it can get very cold at night. What are, what for are sure. people in Big Bear gonna do? Right. And like Arrowhead, it's just fucking freezing bring, right now. Bring a coat. <laughs> and again, put your mask on immediately after eating and drinking. Singing and shouting are strongly discouraged. <laughs> shouting. That, yeah, my, those that who, rules those, out my family. Here, here's, here's what they say about um, singing and shouting. Those who participate in these activities should, quote, do so quietly. Singing and shouting? Yeah. Shout, All right. shout, so if you're going to sing or shout, just... Perfect solution. Like <laughs> we'll go full right. Jeff Dunham. Uh, musicians. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. That's good. This Mus is my favorite one. Musicians are allowed at gatherings. The playing of any wind instruments, oh, though, strongly discouraged. So Jim Carolla's no out. flout, oh. no trumpet. Fucking two thousand dollar trumpet out the window. First off, I know Big Obo. 
<laughs> they're going to fucking mount a lobbying campaign yeah, and they're going to crush this guy. He's never going to hold office again. What does Ian Anderson do? Oh, not boy, that is, that's a good point. And how do, you, how do you mask that man? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's that, unmaskable. You can't go to the Marshall Tucker Band's Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> yep. Space for gathering must be large enough to allow guests guests to maintain the distance of six feet from those who are not within their household. And then finally, uh, if you... <clears throat> Where is the bathroom thing? That's my favorite. It's attached. It's it's high up. It's at the bottom of the social ah, distance go. one. This is my favorite. All gatherings held outside. Now, attendees may go inside to use the restrooms. Oh, my God. I I had such a breath of relief when I <laughs> when I realized that uh, that Governor Dipshit would let me go back into my house <laughs> to drop a log. And so, oh, I thought I was going to have to shit in a decorative popcorn tin like I was in high school. It's okay. It's, it's okay. 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 But Woo. the restrooms have to be frequently sanitized. Frequently. 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 All right. This guy's a fucking buffoon, retard, asshole, and everyone should just do whatever the fuck they want. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's in it for him. But I'm I'm certainly not sure what's in it for everyone who listens to him. So uh, there you go, everyone. Enjoy your uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving, Callie. The uh, silver lining is that anyone you know who's having you know people over or not sanitizing their restrooms frequently, which I imagine is most people, do you can do a little prank call to the cops and just say, "Hey, I got yeah. a hot tip. There's someone uh, has uh, more than three households, and all those restrooms are sanitized." What what percentage of people in California are going to do any of this? Oh, the the I, I like the one. There's one in there, Dawson, about how you have to serve the food. Oh, yeah. That's the one, like disposable right. containers, you know. What? No, paper plates. No paper plates, no chafing, you know. You, no you, buffet line. How the fuck are you going to make sweet potatoes in a in a fucking plastic container? Mm -hmm. Or you're going to make them, then you're going to transfer them into some? What is that one? Sorry. As much as possible, all food and drink should be served in disposable containers. Gravy looks good in one of those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tupperware gravy, yeah. <laughs> While self-serve communal containers and other shared items should not be used by the gathering. Right, so no no chafing dishes. All right. Well, no one's going to do any of that. I, I don't suspect he thinks anyone's going to do any of that. It's unenforceable. And for some reason, he's virtue signaling, but he's signaling I'm a retarded asshole. That's, That's what his signal is. So I don't know why he's putting it out there. And every time I bring it up, Mike August goes, because he's running for president. I'm like, well, how so is that helpful? He's a retarded <laughs> asshole is running for president. OK, but anyway, uh, so there you go, California. Awesome. We should open the schools. My uh, Thanksgiving dinners are pretty modest. How many Thanksgiving dinners by percentage involve an 18-piece orchestra or the woodwind <laughs> section? I know. No. I love I it. I mean, mine's are just jazz quartets. <laughs> yeah, that's just right. Just a harp in the, in the corner. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We got some uh, pictures to show you and some homeless stuff to do and uh, some calls up there. And uh, Gina's got uh, a Facebook uh, caption contest we'll get into. All right. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, man, get it on. Brett, your electrician friend, San Diego. My wife just left uh, out of town, and I counted 14 times. 14 times, Ace man, she reminded me to give the dogs water. Female canine hydration syndrome. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, I realize okay. that's uh, that's the number one. Once a woman crosses the age of 30, her number one concern is giving dogs water. Amen. That is the biggest deal. I've been, I said I had a couple of women pull over in my neighborhood, ask me if I need they pulled their cars over and got out with a bottle of water. I was just walking Phil. Yeah, female canine hydration. I think disorder. I think fucked. Disorder. They're fucked. Fucked, fucked is the uh, is we're all fucked is the uh, yeah. is the acronym. 
All right. We have that. We have uh, restless cock syndrome. There's a lot of stuff going on in this world that uh, the news doesn't cover. Yeah, just getting buried by COVID. It's getting buried by COVID. Yeah. yeah. Canada just won't shut the fuck up about that. Yeah. Meanwhile, restless, restless cock syndrome, I think last I checked, uh, 3.5 billion males yeah. are, <laughs> suffer, <laughs> suffer in silence. In silence. Huh? Versus COVID. All right, so uh, we got a call up there. Uh, Gina's got some stuff. I don't know. I don't know all of it, but we'll get to it. Um, I'm going to talk to Trump. I'm going to do an interview with Trump on uh, Tuesday at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, and you can listen live on the Stereo app. And um, I uh, yeah. I'm- so there's there's an app called Stereo. And all, all you have to do is just download it. It's on it's on your iPhone or, or Android, and you follow Adam Carolla's profile, Adam Carolla, and he's going to be interviewing people live on the app. So you can listen uh, to a broadcast live. And we're going to kick it off with we have an appointment with the president. And I have a uh, I starting have, strong. I have yeah, a, I'm I, nothing. I have a good uh, yeah. After that, it'll be uh, Matthew McConaughey's brother, and then. <laughs> You know, we'll kind of slide down. <laughs> yeah, then it'll be the guy that. in the shirt from Gina's uh, Park. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But we'll start with Trump. And uh, I got a joke. I got a I got a big surprise joke for him that I'm going to reveal to him. Kind of a visual Ooh. thing. So uh, that'll be so you can watch that and enjoy that. Uh, William uh, DC 32. William. Hey guys, how's it going? Hi guy. Howdy. Okay. What's okay. going on? Yeah. So, uh, just want to get the, uh, general feeling of the room, I guess. Um, there's a giant disparity between, uh, you know, the pollsters, uh, those shysters and, uh, you know, what, what one is seeing in the streets, like, you know, the random parades for boats, random people sporadically, uh, having, uh, let's say Obama had, um, an event yesterday in Miami, uh, he had more counter protesters outside the rally honking than people inside the quote unquote rally, uh, yesterday. Kamala had an event today in Ohio, um, which is, you know, quote unquote full of energy when it was just like, you know, yeah, and people put then, together in a parking lot. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how it translates into that versus the polls versus the accuracy of the polls. I don't imagine it translates much, but on the other hand, there, there's an element of, well, if there's a bunch of people showing up for one person, it, it feels like it feels like something. It's kind of like um, I always used to kind of talk about this when they talk about ratings on TV. You know, I never really cared about the ratings. It was sort of how often do you get stopped in the airport? Mm. If you're getting stopped in the airport a lot, then you're on a successful show. If, if you're not, then you're not on a successful show. You can kind of spin the ratings how you want. This isn't exactly that, but it has elements, elements of that. So, yeah, maybe the polls are a little depressed for Trump or maybe the ones who are enthusiastic. I don't think there's any enthusiasm for Biden. There's enthusiasm for Trump and then there's a th- enthusiasm against Trump. So, mm-hmm. so you kind of go... Well, but look at all the enthusiasm for Trump and there's no enthusiasm for Biden. That's true. But you have to factor in all the enthusiasm against Trump. And that that to me is a factor. So in the past, it was sort of like Michigan is playing Ohio State. You got the Michigan fans. You got the Ohio State fans. But there wasn't a third fan. There was the fans that liked Michigan and then the fans that liked Ohio State. But there wasn't one of the gambler's. There wasn't. a Yeah, that's a gambler. There wasn't a third group who just hated Michigan. It didn't really like Ohio State or didn't care about Ohio State. And so now that makes it tough to poll. Sorry, because you can look in the stands and see the blue Mm -hmm. for Michigan and see the red and white for Ohio State. But we can't see the third group Mm -hmm. who hates Michigan. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. 
We can talk about this as long or as little as you want. I wasn't joking the other day when I said I've read every article I could find about this election dating back many months. And uh, there was an article, you're very, uh, very sharp there, Adam, because there was an article that I refer back to about voter enthusiasm and Trump supporters uh, like our friend William here like to uh, point out that the enthusiasm is so much higher on Trump's side. Uh, while that is true and that is proven that Trump voters are more enthusiastic about their candidate than Biden voters are enthusiastic about their candidate, the uh, the the amount of Trump voters who find Biden very unfavorable is fifty three percent. That's about right, right? For he's, he's plays for yeah. the team, blah blah blah. The amount of Biden voters who find Trump very unfavorable over 80%. So yes, the enthusiasm is there for the for the left or the Democrats or whoever, whoever's going to vote Democrat, but it's not vote, uh, enthusiasm on behalf of Biden, it's enthusiasm against Trump. Yeah. So it'll be a referendum on Trump, mm -hmm. not a sort of that a boy for Biden. So and that's the wild card. I mean, that's what we're going to have to figure out, William. Sure, but the, uh, quick question, uh, maybe um you guys remember that initially it was um the primary got split with Bernie Bros and then I guess Biden camp. So it, mm -hmm. it, while I do think that the Bernie Bros do hate Trump, they also don't like getting you know pushed over twice in a row, right? With Hillary. So I don't. I don't know. Well, I, I. I. I kind of feel like the Bernie Bros. That group may have more vitriol for the Bidens and the Hillarys mm -hmm. than even the Trump. They they sort of mm -hmm. think their own, who aren't hardcore enough. In a way, it's like Trump is Trump or Mitt Romney's Mitt Romney or Bush is Bush. You're supposed to do that. But you, you should know better. You're 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 basically you're masquerading. You're as Brutus or something. You know, yeah. you're, you're backstabber. I, I think in a weird, what I've kind of gathered is the Bernie bros have more had more vitriol for Hillary Clinton than they did with for Trump. But uh, anyway, well, look, the good news is we'll find out in like 10 days. That's true. All right. And uh, let's work on the bookings for uh, after the election, because uh, the last time, <laughs> God, who the hell did he? Glenn Washington. Glenn, Glenn Washington. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> that was a that was a tough outing because he was he was coming out of his skin after that. Yeah. Just um, let's see. Let's see. Can you get Bernie Coppell from uh, the Love Boat or someone's a little more a little older, a little more sort yeah, of. Yeah, Smirnoff might work out <laughs> yeah. well. They don't have to be left or right, but just a little elderly and a little little less life in them. <laughs> okay, sure. You know what I mean? Check yeah. Bernie. All right. Uh, Gina, you had some things. What did you have? Yeah, well, I know we were we were going to touch on the homeless again. Um, Chris, do you do you want to talk? Yeah, about the so uh, we want we just I just wanted to point this out. We did a Facebook caption contest because we put that picture up. And remember, we left that homeless picture that Gina took, not know still not knowing what that was. So we had some listeners comment and <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, it's under an overpass. It's got the brick. It's got the it's got the poured in place cement facade behind it. So it looks like you're Holy driving shit. under a freeway. It's but like this, a mini two-story structure. Yeah, it's got a little, it, it's got a little, you know what it's got? I'll tell you what it's got. Remember when you were young and you'd go to one of your friend's houses who parents, whose parents love them and you went to the room and they had a cool bunk bed? That's exactly what I was yeah. thinking. And you're yeah. like, what? Slide. What is yep. this? this? And like, the kid wait, in our house I got one. a fucking prison mattress. It's on a slab. <laughs> They're like, no, no, we got my kid brothers up here. And it's like, that's a whole cool bunk bed thing. It's like, yep, that's what we got. Like, yep. there's always that one friend that had kind of the cool bedroom with the cool thing mm -hmm. in it. That's what it looks like. It looks got a slide. It's got an upper deck. It's colorful. It's colorful. Yeah. It's the vibrant. Colors. It's a summer. Yes. Yeah. So Marianne actually commented on Facebook. Remember being a kid with a huge cardboard box to play in and wishing it had a second floor? <laughs> Wish yes. granted. Wish granted. And yeah, then well uh, said. Chris Lutz wrote, writes, turns out building a life-size version of Mousetrap doesn't make it work any better than the original. <laughs> and Matt Lang writes, this season on American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> and, uh, and the most popular one was John. He wrote, studio with loft, easy highway access. So uh, how about you leave the joking to Adam? There is uh so there's building going on now. And okay. the, <laughs> the thing about building is again, if you ever try to actually build and pull a permit in the city, it's a fucking shit show full of regulations and shit you can't do. But um 
AV Ed sent me a couple of pictures. I guess he's like kind of in the Silver Lakey area, but he was explaining to me that there's building going on in his street and uh, be, beyond just the big RV that's parked there. He said there's a guy who has an RV. He has a Porsche, too, like a, a Porsche SUV. He gets in the Porsche SUV and goes somewhere every day, like presumably to work, and then huh. comes back and sleeps in the RV. The RV, these these places, uh, which are like, eh, I guess it'd be kind of Boyle Heights, uh, Silver Lake, or whatever. There's houses there are $2.7 million, and you get to park your RV out front, just mm-hmm. live tax-free for free. But the pictures Ed showed me there was some building going on do you have that maxipata there's i mean oh yeah they sure. they got they got they tents condos. they got condos they got visqueen those are semi permanent structures uh, yes they're look they look like this shit the military puts up in the desert for like desert yep. storm right like they the point is is people are building structures on the street and living in them and we are doing Nothing about it. The other one is the guy has workout equipment. He's got he has the inversion table. Oh, wow. the inversion machine. Well, you know, doing all that building out on the street, you can throw your back out. He's got the inversion wow. machine. He's got the water bottles. He's, look at the look at the sink. He's he's yeah, setting up sink. shop on the fucking sidewalk. And my whole thing is fine. I mean, I don't know. Probably not the probably not the best way to run a city, but so be it. But fine. Don't come to me when I'm trying to build a mezzanine in my fucking warehouse and tell me all the shit I can and can't do. That's all. Because obviously you're lawless. Why are you coming into my warehouse? And also, at what point I'm passing places now, I'm seeing kids toys and jungle gyms and tents and visqueen and you know, everything. It's structures. Now, now I'm seeing structures, RVs. They're building structures off of the RVs. At some point, physically, what, there's going to be a sort of physical mass where there's just going to be 7 million metric tons of shit. I mean, at a certain point, how do you clean up a shanty town? I mean, it's it's one thing if somebody puts a shopping cart and a refrigerator box over there, or a couple pallets. At some point, when it becomes so fucking prevalent, like how do you physically clean it up? I mean, the entire, the entire, you know, if you would have taken a snapshot of the city twenty years ago, there would have been a couple of people sleeping under freeway overpasses, and and in terms of the physical manifestations of that. It would have been a couple of boxes, some shit with shopping carts. Everything was a shopping cart, you know. Maybe there'd be a bike, some stolen bike or something parked there. There's now, if in you would like to get rid of this, you physically have to do a lot of work. I mean, there's just, there's many, many, many structures now spread out over a, you know, 80 square mile radius, like how are you physically going to clean it up? Like how much manpower do you have? How big, how big is the, how, how big is the dump? I mean, where do you physically put all this shit? I mean, it is, it is a ton of physical material now. And think of optic optics. Cause the farther you kick this can down the road and the more you let this stuff spread and build, whoever's the guy holding the hot potato saying, we got to get rid of this is going to be on camera um, sanctioning bull- bulldozing whole uh, neighborhoods. And well, that's not a good look. Uh, uh, yes. I mean, it, it is right. So uh, Daryl Hannah's going to have to like chain herself to one of these, <laughs> one of these shanty yeah. towns. I mean, you're so in the past it was like, Hey guy sleeping on the sidewalk, get up and move it along. And then it sort of went to like, Hey guy with the shopping cart, like get up and move it along. Then it kind of went to like, Hey guy in this sort of weird lean to thing underneath the freeway overpass, move it along. Now we need to evict people from their homes. Put put a notice on their door. That's right. We need to physically destroy people's homes. And you know the fucking pussies in this town are going to be like, what are you doing? That's that's his home. His kids are in there. Like, 
<laughs> well, the angle they took, I just heard this on the radio, could have been KFI. They said the reason why the reason they're giving to move people from under the overpasses is not for the quality of the life of the community. It's because they're worried that the people who live there are inhaling too much carbon monoxide. <laughs> From the cars. I love it when some of these guys are going to talk. Some of these guys are going to think about moving. They're going to think about selling their home. Yeah. At some point, they're going to get a termite inspection. The termite inspection is going to come in like, listen, I'm sorry. We have to tent your tent. The tent needs <laughs> to be tented. Uninhabitable. Yeah. We got to tent it. You have to move into another shopping cart slash shantytown tent for three to seven days. We're going to have our guys to come here and tent your tent. All right. So, hmm. Can I just tell you real quick that that next door app? Now I I stopped shitting on them briefly because they're the ones who tipped me off to the fifty percent off sale at Whole Foods. But they're back with a vengeance. If anyone has the next door app, which is literally just Yenta's bitching about whatever neighborhood you're in. So in my neighborhood, as Adam can imagine, because he's familiar with this neighborhood, there's a lot of people being like, now there's an encampment under the cold water overpass. Mm. Now there's one under the one thirty four, and it's just constant encampment talk. Well, we finally found the hero that we needed. Maybe not the one we asked for, but this was the newest um, uh, post on my Nextdoor app that came in today. I, it's a man. I see so many posts about the homeless in the neighborhood and how unsightly everyone thinks it is and how unhappy people are about it. And I completely understand. And it's concerning, especially when they're doing things that are unsafe and endangering others. With that said, I ask you, has anyone offered help or solutions to the issue? Or are you just complaining about it? Are you actively working to eradicate the issue or to offer some assistance or aid solutions to the problem? Has anyone offered to give them a job or even just look them in the eye and acknowledge them? Maybe less complaining and more offering actual solutions and ideas. Right. So this is the person we're talking about who is not considerate, but is trying to signal that they are, yeah. because I guarantee this Yenta has never knocked on anyone's tent door and offered them a job. Mm -hmm. Also, and guess what? Yeah, I have serious. not you a have. job, but I've I've done the food thing. I've done the this. And I don't appreciate the five year old that lives with us being terrified when we go on a walk. Um. The uh, yeah, the picture Ed took was on in Silver Lake, just above Atwater. And by the way, by the way, like, that I, condo gave themselves windows. Yes, if you look at the picture, I love. Uh, I love them. They offered them a job. Like, yeah, I'm a drywall contractor. Do you do do you do mud and tape? Uh, do you do joint compound? Like, how many? Uh, I'll pay you. Uh, we'll do piece. We'll do piece work. I'll pay you uh, fourteen bucks a sheet. Like. You can't go to W nine. Fucking guy sleeping on the street. We right. offer him a job. All right. Anyway, it's uh, again. You can look the other way. That's that's fine. That doesn't mean it. It is basically nature. It is ivy. You can look the other way, but do not expect that ivy to ever stop growing. Do whatever whatever it's engulfing, it shall engulf. You go. Oh, I don't have a good way to get rid of it. Okay. I don't know what to do about it. Fine. Uh, I don't want to be mean to the Ivy. Okay. Go back in your house and check back in a year and see where the Ivy is. Have that you asked the Ivy if they <laughs> want a job? If they want a job. All right. Let me hit uh, red cap here. That's red cap with a K, not a C. Red cap is one of the oldest makers of workwear in the country. Outfitting our essential workers for nearly a century. They have something for seemingly every industry from coveralls to high visibility work shirts to oil blocking chef coats and shops. The stuff is top notch. The coveralls are great. I was uh, wearing them just the other day. The work wear is pretty damn great as well. Again, they've been around, I think, since 1923. So, you know, they're doing something right right now. Go to redcap.com, enter promo code Adam, get 20% off your first order. This offer ends November 20th, so get there and uh, get some top-tier industrial-grade work wear, and uh, it's perfect, and it'll be perfect for any job. That's redcap.com, redcap with a K, promo code Adam. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back, we'll play our Rotten Tomatoes game. Gina, you won last? I did. Gina won last week. Yeah. Uh, we'll do that right after this. Listen to that noise. That's a high falsetto voice. voice. That can only mean one thing, and you can feel it. Got some names of flicks. 
and the gang makes their picks. Guessing if it's rotten or fresh. If they guess it exactly, we'll get a bonus five. It's the Rotten Tomatoes game. You know how we do it. Give me the Rotten Tomatoes game. Now it's time to play it. All right, so Halloween is finally here in six more days, five more days. And the Rotten Tomatoes game is going to hell. Kaiser Soze once said, The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Well, guess what? He does exist. And they made a ton of movies about him to prove it. This week, we're shining a big red spotlight on movies that feature an appearance From the Prince of Darkness. Mm. Before Adam Sandler was the darling of Netflix, he made a movie about being the son of Satan, who has no interest in continuing the family business. Harvey Keitel co-stars as the man in red, but it's up to little Nicky to restore the balance between good and evil on Earth. From 2000, Little Nicky. I have seen this movie maybe more than once. Wow. I study it. Like the guys from the transportation department try to put together a DC nine that has crashed. It it's horrible, but somebody has to reconstruct it. Like I just right. look at it and I just try to make reassemble it. it and I'm trying to make sense of it. Like why? What happened? What went wrong? Was it was it pilot error? Was it catastrophic <laughs> mechanical failure? But I know everyone just goes along, like, hey, I want to enjoy myself at the movies. Not me. I want to know what happened. I am reconstructing. I, I, I'm re, it's, it's, it's like those things where it's like first the school shooter came in the front door and then the school shooter turned down the main hall. Like it's, it's morbid. It's grotesque, but somebody has to do it. Yeah. This, not for the faint of heart, this, this movie. And, and it's weird. Cause Sandler's such a funny guy and he's such a talented guy. This movie, like, it's just like, what the fuck? Like, what were you doing? Like, what? First things first. Why did anyone think this was a good idea? It seems so bizarre. It's 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 like Sandler is a very smart guy. He's a very talented guy. And he's a very nice guy. Why make this decision? Mm-hmm. Um, it is it is like it's nonsensical. He's, he's doing this weird character where he's like, okay, with the well, that's fucking... most of his characters. No, a, I mean, yeah, weird voice in especially this. he's especially weird in this. It's the kind of thing where like, I don't know, 11 days into shooting, I probably just went to one. You know what? Let's just go home. Like, what, what the fuck? Is this going to work? Throw good money after bad. Right. So let's pack it in. They should have done with this what they did, whatever California did with the bullet train. That's what they should have done with this. It was like, oh, fuck it. We're, we wasted enough money. Cut your losses. This is insultingly bad. And it's, it's, it's bad. And I, I'm doing what uh, Brian won't do, which okay. is I am telling you this is not bad for an Adam Sandler movie. This is, oh, it is bad for a bad Adam Sandler movie. Like, you know, you, there's the good ones and the bad ones. This is probably the bottom of the bad ones. And with First that, of all, I'm very honest with, my, with you guys yeah. all the time. Yeah. You take liberties. Mm. I've seen a scene or two, which is why I know what he sounds like, but that that was very thorough and appreciated, Adam. It's it's bizarrely bad. I I look. I, I don't think it's going to be zero, but I, I don't know who would have given it a positive review. 11%. Only a little higher, 21. I started at 11. I ended up at 7. Mm. Oh, my. Little Nicky is rotten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at 22. Oh, oh. 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 wow. Now we're talking. Who Unbelievable. This movie? All right. War has erupted in the United States, between the United States and Canada, over the censorship of the ultra-vulgar new Terrence and Philip movie. Will the boys of South Park restore peace, or will an overly emotional Satan and his horny boyfriend Saddam Hussein take over the world? Find out in 1999's South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. God, this was good. Yeah, great, great movie. God, I don't think I've seen it. 
It's Kylo, nine, you must. 90, you must. 99. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's pretty great. All right. So. I thought it was going to be like a cash grab. It was, like, it was only no. a couple of years after the movie, the TV series premiered, and it ended up being really good. The musical numbers will not disappoint. Is this Blame, is Blame Canada in this yep. one? Yep. That's yep. right. Oscar nominated. All right. Critics love this kind of stuff. So it's crass, a lot of dirty language, but the critics love this kind of stuff. But there's some of them are a little uptight. That's why I give it 81. Oh, pretty close. I think, I think it rubs some critics the wrong way, but overall is a great movie. 87. I would have gone higher, but I went with 86. South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut is certified fresh. Oh, yeah. At 80. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. And like the people it. have it 88. All right, we got a game on our hands, people. After Bill and Ted's excellent adventure traveling through time, the two slackers come face to face with evil robot copies of themselves who kill both heroes. Determined to escape the afterlife, Bill and Ted set out on a bogus journey to outwit the Grim Reaper and stop the tormenting of, you guessed it, Satan. From 1991, Bill and Ted's bogus journey original title bill and ted go to hell the studio <clears throat> didn't like it oh all right so this is the second they've done three right um i never saw any of these so i don't huh. know first, first one's a great. legit good movie yeah um this probably probably is not loved but the characters are likable and do you know who plays uh, the uh, the Grim Reaper there? No, William Sadler. If you guys do, uh, put up some pictures of William Sadler there, Chris, he plays uh, one of the guys in Shawshank. He's one yep. of those characters. Like, oh yeah, that guy. And he's unrecognizable here. Um. All right. So you know, it's a follow up, um, sequel. Critics aren't going to be kind. I didn't hear anything great about it. Yeah, there he is. I didn't hear anything great about it. But it, but it could still be fifty six percent. It could. It could also be fourteen percent. When Carol throws out a number, everyone listen. That's right. I am going to say rotten at forty four percent. I played it safe, barely fresh at sixty one. I thought I played it safe, barely rotten at fifty. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is rotten at 57%. Mm. Why don't I listen to me listening to you? This is close. What did you guys say? I said 44. 61 and 44. Well, Keanu Reeves faces off against the devil again, this time in the form of a screaming, spitting, over-the-top Al Pacino. Aspiring defense attorney Kevin Lomax takes an offer to work for a high-powered New York law firm, but as his wife, played by Charlize Theron, continues to have frightening visions, Kevin learns the truth about who he's really working for from 1997, The Devil's Advocate. He's an absentee landlord! (laughs) I have no... I have no idea. I have no interest in these types of movies. They made a bunch of them like in the 90s. And yeah. it was like, there's like Johnny Depp version of this. And I I don't know why. What is wrong with this genre, Brian, that I just um, don't, it bothers me. I, I like, I'm not into it. There's some crossover with some of the action movies you like, like Cobra and such. I don't know if this is even a good movie, but it is enjoyable. I've rewatched this many times. Again, I don't think it's that good, but it's 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 junk food. You know what I mean? It's a big mm. ju- juicy cheeseburger. It's Al Pacino doing crazy shit. Charlize Theron, Chris, do us all a favor and put up some stills of Charlize Theron from this movie. She's gorgeous. First time I ever laid my eyes on her was this movie. But I'm with Adam on the genre. This is like the 90s power tie genre that right. just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, with the gold clip. Yeah. Yeah, the safety pin pulling the collar in. Uh, I have no idea. I've never seen this movie. I can't imagine it's fresh. On the other hand, good performers and who knows. Good Lord. For that, I give it 55. Oh, right there with you. Uh 
barely rotten. It's 58. I stuck with my 50 again. Yeah, Charlize Theron with the, with the, Jeez. with the, the hair. Ogilvy home perm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Theron. Yeah, oh, Theron. Sorry. Right. She's she's got the. Um, oh God. I went with straight hair, then Ted called, so I went curly. Well, she does play kind of Florida trash, you know what I mean? Like, a little bit, so that kind of makes sense with the character. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of her hair. She has the same hair as uh, Bernadette Peters. Yeah, those That's tight Bernadette little Peters hair. Girl. All right, what do we got? The Devil's Advocate is fresh. Oh. Mm. At 63. Mm. What'd you guys do? You did 50, Brian, what'd you do? 58. Ooh. Oh, all right. I'm, Brian I'm Brian has got a lead here. We're going to have to get him. Yeah. And it just wouldn't be Halloween without a little witchcraft. In this Disney cult classic, the Sanderson sisters, played by Bette Midler, Sarah <laughs> Jessica Parker, and Kathy Nijimi. Nijimi. Gina, this is your uh, this is your zone. I can't wait to tell you a secret about this movie. Go they're, ahead. They're brought back to life on Halloween night to roam the streets of Salem. Along the way, they encounter Satan, their master, who is actually a schlubby guy dressed in a devil costume and played by Gary Marshall. From 1993, <laughs> Hocus Pocus. I've never seen this. I don't know anything about it. It's somehow making a resurgence right now. I couldn't tell you the first thing about it. Is this our last one, Dawson? Uh, yes. Wait, what, Gina, what's your secret about this movie? The secret. I've never seen it. Oh. This is not. I've. I've no. I could. I could not tell you anything about it. But yeah. it, aren't you seeing a lot of it now? Are they doing some? Uh, there was a resurgence for this. Yeah. Maybe because of the Disney Plus. Oh. Maybe. Yeah, it, it's totally my generation's movie of like, like all my friends watch this. Oh, Jesus. constantly. That's what I mean. I was too young for this. I must say, Gina, I got myself emotionally built up for your big secret about this movie. <laughs> I'm slightly dismayed that go your here. big secret was I didn't see it. Please, well, Brian, I mean, Brian thinks this is, I would have a tattoo of this on my back. I don't know anything about this movie. Nothing. Please never write a tell nothing book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Brian has a lead. It's not insurmountable, but it's a lead. It's 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 a it's a solid lead. So and Gina and I are just kind of pecking around the corners of uh, Brian's Trisket. And I've never seen this either. I don't know what to do. We're going to have to pick up a few here. So we're going to have to go big or small. Uh, Brian's going to have to kind of protect the lead. So he's going to have to try to find a kind of a middle ground here. Right. Now it's Disney, you know, women in charge, never hurts for a few points. Um, <clears throat> I am going to have to go small with 22. Oh, uh, this, this will determine the game because I, I assumed, like you said, it was Disney. I'm sure there's some charm to this. Chris seems to speak of it fondly. Uh, 66. You said go big or go home. You took the 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 floor. I took the ceiling. I said eighty three. Oh this boy! This will determine the game. <laughs> will determine it. Hocus Pocus is rotten. Damn it! At thirty seven percent. Oh, that look at you! May have been enough. Woo! Oh, I just gained thirty points on that one. <laughs> I, yeah. Good night, everybody. Gina's out. I have no I'm idea out. where me and Brian are. Can't be separated by much. Very tight game. Very tight. Gina Grad, congratulations yeah. on your third place finish. Thank you. A score of 87 points. Oy. We're co close to cutting those in half for Ooh. Brian and the Ace Man. Ball. Tell Chris to shut the fuck up next time. <laughs> Ball. Fox is poetic about Hocus Pocus. I wasn't wagging. I'm just saying, it's my, it, this is like this. Oh, the, 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 I love it. It's my favorite you movie from like the year. Dirty, Chris. For it. Yeah. You the guy, dirty. The guy eats the whole shrimp, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're taking advice from him. Maybe it's a case of Brian's magic working against him, where he, uh, you know, tells everyone that a movie's great and then gives it a horrible score. I think Chris did the same thing to him. Bald Brian Never coming in with a score Never. of 46. Never done that. Leaves us Adam Carolla. Oh, boy. A shot out of the ballpark for the last movie. An upper decker, we like to call it. And a congratulations <laughs> is due <laughs> to you, Adam Carolla, for second place. You got 48. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, oh, 
my body into it. Me. <laughs> so me and you, Brian. Uh, Chris, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> I take anyway. back everything I said. Uh, I went right down that road with you too, Dawson. Two points. Right there, two points. Wow. I must have made up 25 at the at the end. But either way, all right. Uh, well, speaking of that, I need some uh, better help. Overwhelmed, anxious, lost your 15th consecutive Rotten Tomatoes game, <laughs> depressed, better help. Online, licensed professional counselors who are trained to listen and help. Look, uh, everybody, especially these days, man, you got to get your head straight. And when you get your head together, then you can go out and do all the other things that make your life happy and prosperous. So let's get that going first. Connect with your counselor in a safe, private, online environment. Everything shared is confidential. Fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs and get matched in under 48 hours. Easy to schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages. If for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor, request a new one anytime at no charge. So you join the over 1 million people using BetterHelp right now. Right, Dawson? BetterHelp is a truly affordable option, and our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code Corolla. So why not get started today? Go to BetterHelp.com slash Corolla. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash C-A-R-O-L-L-A. Talk to a therapist online and get help. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with the news right after this. Zapata, you find that uh, K Jewelers commercial anyway? Kaelin, put up... Uh, we're... I meant to ask you, is this what you were talking about? Because uh, we just want to make sure we don't put up the wrong one on air. Yes. Okay. Well, if it's a different... Well, yeah, run it. Let's see. Someday, I'm going to marry you. Someday, uh, this is a different, a this was a different one than the one they're running. Yeah, but like, may, maybe it's just the last 10 seconds of it. Or whatever. All right. That would fine. make sense, though, because it's it's ethnic. And those mm. are... They're doing thick Latina chicks. Ah, uh, they didn't have that in the... In this part, they just had sort of the proposal. Anyway, we'll do news. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. All those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gino Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drunk meltdowns. Seek news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. All right, I'll start off with a question. Did anybody watch the new Borat movie this weekend? Uh, Running late on that one. I oh. did not. Please do. Do not sleep on this movie. It is great. You know, sequels can be tough. And how could they possibly do that? Everyone knows who he is. Well, they make it work. And they they actually even wink at that and play into that as well. So very uh, well done movie. But, you know, Rudy Giuliani's not happy about it. And I actually have the clip from the movie to to show you why. But Borat has come to his defense. Um, first, do you want to see the clip or sure. should we talk about the defense? Okay, this is the clip from the movie that is getting a lot of uh, airtime. I told you there were many things about this movie, th- about this type of humor that I'm not like, it doesn't work for me anymore. But he's Sasha, man. He's He makes everything funny. I so wouldn't, he, I wouldn't yeah. typify it as him with his hands down his pants. I think he was tucking his shirt back in. Like, I wouldn't. Really? Well, okay. hands down his pants sounds like something. Was hand, okay. Well, I mean, his hand was down his pants. Well, yeah. But I don't if you, know if he was tucking his shirt in. I don't know if he was getting his mic off. I don't know what he was doing. I just saw his hand. Down his pants. That's that's. I'm literally just telling you what it, what it is. Okay. I don't know what he's doing with it. No, I'm I'm saying if you walked into a bedroom and you go, the guy's got his hands down his pants. It sounds like something different than if you're tucking your shirt in or doing something with your mic. You know what I'm saying? Do, does it? I I would. Lo- I really don't know. Do you think he was doing something with his mic or tucking his shirt back in? I think he was tucking his Either shirt or. back in, but I don't. I. I well, we let's just again. say he was going for his junk. I mean, let's say, okay. let's say he was okay beating off or something. That would be weird. I sure, mean, it didn't, it, that didn't appear like that to me. It was either a mic or tucking shirt in it, action. It looked like he was tucking his shirt in. But you have to put your hand for a while. Yeah, but you know I don't what? know I've never how. Never worn a man's dress shirt, so you could be right about that. You have to push it. You have to kind of get it back in. 
really, really settle it. Well, Borat has come to Giuliani's defense. You could say he uh, put up this viral video um, and, <laughs> you know, and, and wants to lend his uh, lend his expertise. Yog Shamash, I here to defend America's mayor, Rudolf Giuliani. What was an innocent, sexy time encounter between a consenting man and my 15 year old daughter have been turned into something disgusting by fake news media? <laughs> <laughs> I warn you, anyone else try this, and Rudolf will not hesitate to reach into his legal briefs and whip out his subpoenas. <laughs> Chen Kui. He's getting a lot of mileage out of that. Oh, that it's funny. Yeah, I'm going to watch. No, I'm not going to watch. I, I'm, it, it gets me. I'm, I can't even watch, like, I can't even watch, like, cop shows where they bust people and stuff anymore. Yeah. I just I feel... I don't know. I'm just, I'm too old. Like I can't see people getting busted or making yeah. hidden camera stuff. It just, it, it Well, you it know, I, I'm, I'm the exact same way. And there were parts of course that were like that, but I have to say the only part you'll really need to fast forward is the um, debutante ball. And that's, that's all I'll say about that. When you see them go to the debutante ball, keep it moving. All right. uh, so Adam, you have a lot in common, or at least one very important thing in common with Ryan Reynolds that I don't think you know about. Hmm. His birthday was October 23rd, and his wife, Blake Lively, put him on blast uh, for his birthday dessert request. Reynolds chose a birthday pie. Yeah. But that decision did not sit well with Blake. She shared photos, and we have those, of her 44-year-old husband before he blew out the candles saying, one, who's the lost soul that selects birthday pie? And then she said, what animal eats their cake slash pie without first blowing out their candles? Because you can see there's a little chunk missing in the corner. Happy birthday, Ryan. I honestly can't believe we're still married because he and he got like four different pies for his birthday. You know, it takes a big man to admit this. But as I get older, I drift closer to cake. <gasps> now, I don't know if that's just my adult this sensibilities or I think it's more a case of cake upping its fucking game. You're 100% right. The, the grocery store sheet cake is a thing of the past. Yeah. Like, the, the cakes are great these days. Yeah, all the fucking cakes. Someone would go to Ralph's, get a fucking sheet cake. And like I said, if you want to know how a sheet cake tastes, just hold your tongue when you say sheet cake. <laughs> and if you want to know what the real name for flag football should be, just hold your tongue again when you say flag football. Those are, those are all the truths you need to know in life. But yeah, some asshole would what go are you to- talking about? <laughs> I literally told that to my son yesterday. He's like, I know, hold my tongue and say flag football. So <laughs> the someone would go to fucking Ralph's and they'd get one of these vanilla sheet cakes mm -hmm. with the white lard on top of it and go i brought a cake to the party you know so i was like blah there was a chocolate version in it but now i i did not see the red velvet cake you know that that's not something i dealt with when i was coming up when i was doing my initial pie versus cake uh evaluations it, the cake was the fucking sheet cake from ralph's and the pie was just pie pie because of its greatness has not had to evolve. It, no. It's it's an alpha predator. It's an apex predator. That's what Pi is. Pi is a fucking polar bear. It's a lion. It's a Bengal tiger. It's fucking Sasquatch. And, uh, and a buttery crust. And a, it's a shark. And, and a great white shark, like all in the one. Like, why do you have to get better at being Pi? You're fucking Pi. You're the alpha predator. So, mm -hmm. so Pi has just remained. Cake has been like we better fucking up our game, and up their game they have. I mean, they're getting buttercream, the buttercream butter frostings, oh. and they're still doing all the fruit in the centers and now and everything like that. And what's the cake from Mastro's? That's oh, butter cake. Oh yeah, the butter cakes. Oh, the lemon cakes, now. all the different fruit flavors. So cake is is up. It's come a long way. I was game, and I'm uh, trying to be intellectually honest here by saying because cake has upped its game, it shall be recognized as such. Wow. Mm -hmm. I feel like for some reason we need to get Damashek on the phone. Like, <laughs> like everyone needs to know where you stand. Don't ever say that. Yeah. <laughs>
So if you've ever read Three Little Pigs and thought there's just not enough women in this story, uh, Natalie Portman has solved that problem for you. Mm. She wrote a book called Natalie Portman's Fables, where she took three classics, Three Little Pigs, The Tortoise and the Hare, and The Country Mouse and City Mouse, and made them more gender inclusive. For example, the tortoise in The Tortoise and the Hare is a lady tortoise. Um, As to why she did this, Natalia says, or Natalie, excuse me, says, when I was reading the book, I was struck by how the classic stories had overwhelmed male, overwhelmingly male characters and thinking, what am I telling my kids, both my son and my daughter about whose stories are important to tell and also whose lives they should care about? You know, as I think about my daughter, who's kind of like a force of nature with all her friends, her 14 year old friends who are all over today. They're all watching. They're all the volleyball team is all there and they're having like a volleyball thing in the backyard. And, uh, Sonny's in his room crying and popping a zit. And these girls are like, they're fucking large and in charge. Like there's not an ounce of where's my role model. Like, I don't know who or what the role models were. I don't know how necessary it was. They're just fucking making hay while the sun shines. Like the girls are organized. They're like energetic. They're out there. The guys are kind of hanging back and playing video games and kind of talking on it, talking to one another on a headset. Uh, As far as I can tell, at least from my little sampling in my neighborhood, the girls are crushing it and the guys are kind of eh, fair fair to middling. I don't know that we need to in I I don't know that my daughter needs to see feminine role models or feminine characters and everything. She's too busy just chewing up the real estate. Right. So, um good, couldn't hurt, but I I would I would push back against that. We don't have, you know, role models or we don't have, or or it's important. I don't, I don't, first off, I always just looked at the turtle or the pig. It's just a pig or a turtle. I didn't really, genderless. I didn't really assign genitalia to them. The, the pigs would wear sport coats with no pants. How could they have a gender assigned (laughs) to them? It'd be grotesque and bizarre. But anyway, ugh. Natalie yeah, it's, Portman. Ugh. It's funny because growing up, you know, of course, the Disney princess was just everything and everything. And even the ones from the 40s, we didn't have a ton of them, you know, like in, say, in the mid 80s. It was all still the the ones, you know, of yesteryear. And now it, it, it of course, it looks outdated for, you know, I'm waiting for someone to find me. You know, we're all it's all just wait for the man to kiss you and you'll wake up. Wait for the man to save you. That that does seem trite now and it does seem sort of silly because the the disney princess has evolved but yeah when it comes to fables this is not something that i think is on anyone's radar well thank you natalie portman <laughs> save her youth did she place on the list of women who discussed this oh yeah she's, she's, she a, she's a perennial yeah. <laughs> she's an all-star she's not she's leaving. frequently in the top 10 she may may have been in the top five a few years she's got to be up there she would be disgusted. She would never stop throwing up. She would be disgusted to not make the top 10. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, she, she didn't make, make the top personally. 10. Uh, she came in 12th one year, and we got a call from her publicist. <laughs> not happy. This is an outrage. Mike had to handle that call. Yeah, she was <laughs> livid. All right, what else, you know? Well, I don't know if you guys saw this in local news at the beginning of last week, but it is worth highlighting. A shoplifter was in a police chase in L.A. on the last Tuesday, and at one point he stopped for gas. I watched this with my jaw drop because we see a lot of chases. I've never seen that before. He managed to fill up before the cops got there and then he took off driving for another hour. The guy allegedly shoplifted from a Home Depot in Glendora, California, sped off when the cops came. Classic Southern California police chase was on. And at one point, the guy pulls into the gas station. I'm have that for you in a second. And he even runs into pay because, you know, in LA, you got to pay first. He fills up. He takes off again. He drove for more than an hour and then he pulled into a parking garage near downtown LA, ran off on foot, no word on anyone who's caught him. So wow. this guy has He filled up for gas and didn't get caught? Correct. So, so this you, is- you you buried the lead, Gina. He the cops pursued a shoplifter? Yeah. yeah right. I know. 
So this is funny. I don't know who's in the in the chopper here, but um, this is the I think the NBC Four audio of them just trying to make sense of this. And uh, we're going to move in that way. He ran into the uh, store once again. Went, went to the pumps. Here he is, back out. A very quick stop, and there he is, pumping the gas. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Are the cops in their cars? Are the patrol units yeah, not around? Not up to him yet. Oh my! God. I have not either. I've always thought about it. I've always thought about: uh, can they, is there ever a pursuit that, that they refuel and then keep going? This is it. This is <laughs> well, he's got plenty of time so far. No officers approaching. We'll keep an eye as I come out wide. Uh, just no units there yet, and we're hoping that uh, uh, that the CHP is aware of uh, the locator here. I'm looking out the window trying to find the airships, and uh, maybe my pilot. Tim can help me, but there he goes back out. It's a quick pit stop for sure. Oh, hey, Christ. He's got the squeegees doing the say. windshield. <laughs> oh, this, this is brazen. Now he's checking wow. the air in his front right tire. <laughs> unbelievable. A little water in the radiator. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You don't see, they don't often, because trust me, anytime there's a chase during Conway show, we stop everything. Oh, we yeah. stop down and we do the whole chase. Every once in a while, what the... I didn't realize because I wasn't watching them often enough. If they go into any parking structure, it's perfect because the choppers can't see them. They don't know if you're going up or down the stairs inside, if you're running into the mall, running into the hospital. Whenever there's a parking structure, that's generally where we lose them. Uh, Natalie Portman, number 46 last year. Oh, hey, that's girl, offensive. You better, oh, you, better up, you better up your game. <laughs> Come on now. It's her fault. It's embarrassing. So you better up your game. Oh, yeah. I better up my game. Despicable. All right. Let me hit uh, Geico here. Yeah, we'll do the top 10 of women most disgusted have sex with me. First, I'll tell you about uh, Geico. I love me some Geico. You want to save 15% on your auto insurance? You go with Geico. You just hop on, uh, go to geico.com and uh, spend a couple of minutes and see just how much you could be saving on your automotive insurance. Uh, you could also do it for your RV, motorcycle, whatever you need to insure, go to Geico, spend 15 minutes and figure out uh, just how much you could be saving 15% or more on your auto insurance at geico.com. Who's in the top 10? <laughs> Last year, uh, number 10 was Kamala Harris. Oh. Mm. Stronger. Followed by Elizabeth Warren. Oh, yeah. And then Greta Thunberg. Oh, sure. yeah. AOC was number seven. Mm hmm. Soccer player Megan Rapinoe. Oh, yeah. Number six. Oh. Yeah. Number five was Ilhan Omar. Mm. Oh. Lynette came in fourth. Mm. I'm correct top three. Anderson Cooper came in oh, third. Oh, interesting. Mixing it up. Allison Rosen in second. Oh, yeah. Sure. And Alyssa Milano oh, at yeah. the top of the list. Well, they all belong. You know, who are you going to pull out? Yeah, who you got to boot? You got to boot someone and make room for Portman. All right, we'll see you at the end of the year. What else we got, Gina? Well, I have another chase story that is also pretty insane. A couple in Oklahoma met on a dating app earlier this week and went on a date. Turned out to be a high-speed police pursuit. This dude named Brandon Hembry from Tulsa, Oklahoma, met this woman on this dating app, and they went out Wednesday night. But as they were driving, a cop tried to pull him over, and Brandon took off with the girl, the date in the car. So the first date turned into this high speed chase. It ended after Brandon blew through some stop signs, finally decided to pull over. It turns out he had an outstanding warrant for five traffic and drug cases. And now he's also facing more charges, including eluding and obstructing an officer. The cops let the girl go. Uh, she said she didn't know he was wanted. They were on a blind date. She doesn't know what's going on. And, um, and there's probably not going to be a second date. They used to start like that was in the seventies, they would start a movie that way. Mm. Like it's kind of a smoking the bandit. I think you guys, Brian may be surprised to realize that Ron Howard starred in a couple, these weird B chase movies. Wow. Yeah, that is surprising. From the seventies, like eat my dust <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, smoke my chode, I think was the follow up. Oh. No, it eat my uh, Grand Theft Auto or eat my. He he made so Ron Howard was a movie star for like ten minutes, and he made these kind of weird, hacky, and I think those were. Um, oh, what's the name of the directors? The king of the sort of 
horror schlock. Uh, Roger Corman? Yeah, I think they were like Roger Corman movies. Maybe. Eat My Dust was 1976. Grand Theft Auto was 1977. He made these we- uh, maybe Macon County Line, or that was probably another one of those. They made a lot of like car chase girl in the back movies. Uh, Charles B. Griffin did uh, Eat My Dust. But yes, um, Ron Howard starred is like outlaw young car driver guy. If you play the trailer, if you find the trailer to eat my dust, you're gonna you're gonna laugh your fucking With an ass exclamation up. point. Eat my dust. Yes, eat my dust, biatch. So uh I don't know why, but that that kind of reminded me of like it was always some hot chick. If all you needed was a souped up car. Produced and, by Roger Corman. Oh it was produced by Roger mm-hmm. Corman. Oh, okay. Thanks, Max Bow. Sorry, I was looking up the director and writer. Yeah, get you, get you, get you. I'm wrong. Got you. I didn't uh, say you were wrong. Eh, kind of. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, you could put a hot chick in a car with a Hemi and just have it do burnouts and have <laughs> the cops chase you. And that was about it. That's a real casting against type. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, Ron Howard. You have the trailer for that? I got more speeding tickets than anybody else in the county. I want to ride in, in that car. They speak of a super stalker and tell the world to eat my dust. Darlene is in the fast cars. Hoover is in the Darlene. <laughs> when they get their hands on 700 horses, they've got to get into trouble. <laughs> They're all about to scream and squeal and shattering smash a a hot date in a hot car, cruising at 150, rubber burden, and Smokey can't put it out. Let us just blow them away. Let's just take junker cars and, like... I suggest you call the Strategic Air Command. What, can they catch us? Yeah, if I run into a wall or something. All they just do is take chunk or cop cars and just roll them. Hoover, you're outrageous. Ron Howard pops the clutch and tells the world to eat my dust. It, it's, it's, I assume I assume the Blues Brothers was a parody of all of these styles of movies. I guess it in a sense with all just the absurd amount of cars just piling out. In this, yes, that scene, yeah. In the seventies, the conceit was well, not even the seventies. The Worst movie ever with um, Jimmy Fallon, uh, Taxi, mm. and uh, oh god, uh, uh, Queen, Queen Latifah. Latifah. Queen yeah, Latifah. the con- the conceit of both these movies is if I could get my hands on like a Winston Cup NASCAR, then no one could ever catch me. <laughs> like I, if I had four hundred more horsepower than everyone on the road, then the the fuzz could never catch me. It's academic I, at that point. I could do whatever I wanted. I could get all the hottest chicks, and they could never do anything. It's like, he gets hold of a stock car from the 70s. And so thus, that's the whole movie. I get a stock car from the 70s, and no one can ever catch me. And there's a hot chick in the passenger seat. Simple enough. Eat my dust. There you go. It's weird seeing Ron Howard in that role, it right? Is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so... Ron Howard wrote a comedy with his dad called Tis the Season and raised half the budget from Australia. And he met with Roger Corman and agreed to star in Eat My Dust if Roger agreed to co-finance Tis the Season. C- Corman said no about Tis the Season, but Howard appeared in Eat My Dust uh, and was allowed to develop a second film, which he could direct and star. And that film was Grand Theft Auto. Wow. Well, yeah. there you go. All right, let's do one more, Gina Grant. All right. Well, we've talked about how music affects people. We've talked about that a lot. And guess what? It also affects animals. So according to a new study, dogs are more partial. Actually, I'm going to have you guess. There's two kinds of music that this study says um, relaxes dogs and that they like the best. Two genres of music. Any guesses? Mm. No, you, you never go wrong with classical. No, so classical is the obvious answer, right? And Another study says that classical has a calming effect on dogs, but this study from uh, University of Glasgow in Scotland did not pick classical. Folk. Bagpipe music. Yeah. <laughs> Folk music. I was going to say okay. jazz. It's got to be jazz. It's got to be something without voices, right? Interesting, uh, both of you. You're kind of circling reggae and soft rock. Mm. Talks are dumb. Most calming. Yeah. Talks are dogs. stupid. 
Yeah. Is it the rhythm of like the of the reggae vibe? I don't know. But and maybe, you know, like Yacht Rock. Uh, who doesn't like that? They like Toto. Yeah. Oh, mm. well done. Yeah. They, oh. go three dog nine. they like. Uh, I was listening to that today. They like Rick Springfield's first album. If you pull up Rick Springfield's biggest debut album, I think you'll see what dogs like. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. They like smell the glove. Mm -hmm. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Uh, last but not least, Simply Safe. No one should feel unsafe at home, and that's why you go with Simply Safe. Protect your home today. Get free shipping at Simply Safe. Two eyes. SimplySafe.com. Slash Adam. Got Rick Springfield's first album. We will describe what is on the cover of Rick Springfield's first album. We're getting it. When uh, Max Pata pulls it up. All right. Well, I'll give some plugs. West Palm Beach, Florida, coming up uh, improv November 20th and 21st. Also, you can download the stereo app to hear my interview with Trump live. That'll be Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And, uh, yeah, we'll do live podcasts at West Palm Beach, Florida early. And then late we'll do uh, stand-up shows. We'll do a reasonable doubt matinee on Saturday. And there it is. <laughs> there you go. Rick wow, good Springfield, working class dog. It's a dog with a suit and tie or a, a working shirt and a tie. And I guess a picture of Rick Springfield hanging out of the pocket. Yeah. Out of the pocket. So there, we're on all the right. On the nose. Ooh, fun fact. The editor on uh, Grand Theft Auto, Ron Howard's uh, directorial <laughs> effort, uh, was a young Joe Dante, future uh, director of uh, Gremlins and Inner Space. Wow. Movies. Yeah, it's interesting when you go back. All right. That's almost as good as my secret about Hocus Pocus. <laughs> <laughs> Scintillating. So, until next time, Adam Carolla, Regina Grand, and Bob Bryan saying, Mahalo.